Welcome to this companion video to the Click C board. This video will help you understand how this instrument works, specifically how to calibrate and play it, and also some of the settings that we can choose between on the instrument. And the C board is a little bit special in this regard because it has a bunch of different options and playing modes, and so that's what this video is going to mainly focus on. We'll also get into some possible failure modes, so stuff that can go wrong with the instrument, what problems that might cause, and what we can do to fix or avoid those problems. This is not a tutorial on how to make either one of these. That's in a separate video, and I'll uh, put a link to that down in the description. So, whether you made the Seaboard using the Continuum Lab instrument kit, or maybe you sourced the components yourself and downloaded the code from GitHub, or maybe someone else made it, but now it found its way into your hands and you're wondering what to do with it, this is the video for you. Let's get into it. First, we'll quickly cover calibration. The calibration routine is the same as on all the click instruments. You press the calibration button and hold it down while the LED on the Teensy turns on and then off again. Then you keep holding it down while activating all the sensors. In the case of the C board, of course that means all the keys or pads, but also the pitch bend sensors if your instrument has those. And if you're including melodica functionality, then the breath sensor as well. Once you're done, you can release the button again. Keep in mind that the level of activation as you calibrate will also become the maximum read point when you play. So if you calibrate softly, then the sensors will be very sensitive, sometimes unstable if you go too far, while calibrating with a heavy touch will do the opposite. Uh, of course, the construction of the sensors, especially the available surface area of capacitive sensors, also has a huge effect on this. Anyway, once you're happy with the calibration, you can save it to memory by pressing the calibration button three times in quick succession. The LED on the microcontroller will blink three times to confirm that everything was saved correctly. And now you're ready to play. But of course, how you play the instrument depends on what playing mode you're using. The Seaboard's playing modes are counted as distinct keyboard instruments by the Click software, and so they're selected by inserting a specific set of jumpers into the instrument section on the breakout board. Let's go through them one by one. We'll start with Velocity mode. Velocity playing mode is probably the simplest to explain, where each key responds to touch with a single note output. The velocity of that note is determined by measuring how fast you hit the key. So it is touch sensitive, just not in the sense that you can affect the note after the initial attack. When you lift your finger off the key, a note off signal is sent to turn the note off again. Of course this works polyphonically as well, with no limitation on the number of notes. Next up is Continuous Volume Control. This mode uses the same output as the click wind instruments to control the synth patch continuously. But instead of using a breath sensor, you can fade on and off depending on how much you're touching the key. All note on messages are sent with maximum velocity, but at the same time the volume is being attenuated independently. Normally Continuous Control number 2 is used for this, but it can be changed which I'll cover in a bit. The important thing to keep in mind here is that it's not controlling volume separately for each key. That can be done, and I might get into it in future videos, but it requires separate MIDI channels for each, and so it's quite a lot more complex. Instead, the basic code for the C board implements a technique which keeps track of the order in which the keys are activated, and then it uses the most recently activated one to determine the volume. This is a bit of a hack, and perhaps not what you'd expect, but it works surprisingly well. We'll get into the specific MIDI messages that control volume in a little bit. Now we get to Aftertouch. In a sense, this is a combination of the previous two modes. Each note played is given a separate velocity value based on the speed of attack, but then the last key to be pressed is also read constantly, and it provides an Aftertouch signal. Again, this is not polyphonic aftertouch, but rather channel aftertouch, which affects all notes. 
Actually, to be precise, I'm just telling the TNC MIDI library to send out aftertouch, and then I can see on my synth that it's receiving continuous controller number 129, which I think is supposed to be channel pressure. Honestly, it's all a bit of a mystery to me, but uh, apparently that's what's normally used for channel aftertouch, and that's what's going on here behind the curtain. Also, the typical implementation of that kind of signal uses an average of the pressure on all the activated keys. But the Seaboard instead uses the pressure specifically on the most recently pressed key, just like for the continuous volume control playing mode. This is simply a choice that I made during development. Average pressure could be implemented quite easily, and I might show you how to adapt the code for that in a future video if anyone is interested. Finally, we have the Melodica playing mode. This is my own personal favorite. Being a wind instrument player, controlling volume through breath is just the most natural thing. The first thing to keep in mind if you want to use this is that of course you need to have a breath sensor connected to the instrument and you have to calibrate it together with all the keys. You play this instrument just like any other melodica. If you just touch the keys on their own it produces no output. Just blowing in the breath sensor also does absolutely nothing. But when you do both of those things together the magic starts. So now you can either blow continuously and then make rhythmic notes and chords like this. Or you can pick some notes and then fade them on and off like this. Or whatever else you like. Just like in the rest of the playing modes, of course there's no limit on the polyphony. So those are the playing modes, but of course there are also other options to choose from, some of which are the same as on other click instruments. Let's have a look. First of all, you decide on the number of keys that the instrument has by inserting a jumper into option pin 0. With no jumper, the click software assumes an instrument with 16 key sensors, and with a jumper it expects 32 sensors. So if I remove the jumper on this one, it will now ignore the keyboard from this point and up. You can also select whether or not you want pitch bend functionality by inserting a jumper in option pin 1 or not. And by the way, pitch bend can of course be activated on any one of the playing modes. Then there's the option to change the whole MIDI output stream from channel 1 to channel 2 by inserting a jumper in option pin 2. This one is universal across all the click instruments. Next we have the option to change the volume control output from continuous controller 2 to continuous controller number 7. This affects the continuous volume control playing mode as well as the melodica playing mode. Now this generally gives very different results but can work in a pinch and it's activated by inserting a jumper into the click's analog pin 9 between ground and the signal pin. Finally, we have the option to transpose the whole instrument one octave up or down. To transpose down, insert a jumper on the click's analog pin 5, also between signal and ground. And to transpose up, do the same thing on the click's analog pin 6. So there you go, I think that covers all of the different options and playing modes and how they work. But what if they don't work? Well, let's have a look at some different problems that might occur. First of all, the keys. Now these are capacitive sensors and so they need to be calibrated like I mentioned earlier. But they can be sensitive to noise and crosstalk and so you need to keep an eye on a couple of things. 
It basically comes down to not using cables that are longer than they have to be when you connect each sensor, because this raises the parasitic capacitance, lowers the sensitivity, and can result in the cables basically sensing each other, which creates crosstalk on the sensors. So you want to make sure that they're not tangled up too much inside the instrument. Now, this one actually has very good cable management, so I can't even show you what I mean by tangled up. But check out the companion video to the click string instrument for a good example. Next, the breath sensor. The problems that you might encounter here are basically the same as on any other wind instrument in the Continuum Lab instrument kit, so excuse me if I'm repeating myself. One thing that might happen is that you get a constant or intermittent low level output from the breath sensor, even when you're not blowing in it. This is normally caused by having the balloon membrane too loose, allowing it to move around. So in the case of this 3D printed sensor, that would mean having a water balloon which is too large for the plastic disc inside it. Either get a smaller balloon or make a bigger disc. If you're working with this other kind of sensor setup, then you should be able to just tense the membrane up manually. The opposite problem might also occur. Having a membrane which is too tense will mean that you have to blow really hard in the sensor to get any output, which will give you less sensitivity even after calibrating. Simply adjust opposite to what I just said to fix this. If the breath sensor only outputs noise, then you might have the three cables plugged in the wrong way around or in the wrong order. Make sure that ground goes to ground and so on. And that's it for this companion video. Just like I thought it turned out quite long, simply because this instrument has so many options to choose from. I hope you found it useful and that it helped you understand the potential and possibilities of the Click Seaboard. If you're interested in buying one of the kits for yourself or for a geeky friend or family member, then head on over to continuumlab.com where I sell both the Continuum Lab instrument kit itself as well as various types of Click instruments. The complete kit comes with all of the sensor materials and components necessary to make this instrument and a bunch more. And all of those instruments come pre-programmed onto the microcontroller inside the kit, so even complete beginners can get started making cool MIDI instruments with zero coding and simple techniques. And of course you can check out the build tutorial for the Seaboard as well as the other click instruments right here on the channel. Take care until next time and I'll see you in the continuum.